Welcome back, mitochondriacs. This is Dr. Peebler from another episode of Cancer as a Mitochondrial Metabolic Disease. So we are in the midst of our vitamin D micro series, and I intentionally am doing this video outside because outside is how you get vitamin D. But also, I'm intentionally making these videos about vitamin D as the first videos when talking about the prevention and treatment of cancer from a metabolic and a mitochondrial perspective. The reason is, is because it has so many useful, protective, and critical functions that it provides. And unlike some of the therapies that are required to be given via IV or expensive supplementation or formulations, which have profound effects on cancer metabolism and the Warburg effect, vitamin D is one of the cheapest and best ways to fortify your health, not only to, again, prevent disease, but to reverse disease. And we're going to show that by the way that it is affecting mitochondrial dynamics. In the last video, we talked about how vitamin D was made through UVB exposure and we talked about how it is important for the mitochondrial crista formation and many of its diverse actions on the cell as a whole. However, today we're going to be talking about vitamin D from a standpoint of being able to have an effect on other mitochondrial dynamics, such as mitochondrial biogenesis. If you can remember back from the reversing mitochondrial heteroplasmy video, we talked about how there needs to be a balance of mitophagy and mitochondrial biogenesis. And if those balance are off, generally it's going to lead to increasing heteroplasmy disease, etc. And when increased heteroplasmy happens and when more mutant mitochondria are present and ubiquitous, it's going to diminish the mitochondria's ability to produce energy via oxidative phosphorylation. And it's going to rely on that Warburg metabolism. And it's going to start us down the dangerous road of the metabolic reprogramming that happens in cancer. So if we're able to affect both mitochondrial biogenesis via the action of vitamin vitamin D, as well as mitophagy, then we're going to have a better fighting chance in the prevention and reversal of cancer and the Warburg effect. As is shown here, vitamin D has both direct and indirect effects on several of the co-activators and co-regulators of gene expression that we've talked about recently. We've talked about how when AMP kinase is decreased, we have a pseudo-hypoxia that can drive Warburg metabolism. We've talked about how when AMP kinase is increased, we have more fusion of mitochondria than fission, which is favorable. We've talked about how increasing PGC1 alpha is important for mitochondrial biogenesis. And we've talked to some degree also about CERT1 activity. And CERT1 is another way of increasing a favorable redox state and a downregulation of HIF1 alpha, which again drives another cause of pseudohypoxia. So Although we're not talking about the direct anti-cancer mechanisms of vitamin D, I think that it's important to show these diverse actions. I think it's a little bit sad because I think a lot of people don't believe that vitamin D is critical for your health, and it is. And the people who don't pay attention or just think that they can supplement their way out of this end up mistaken. And they're missing out on all these amazing benefits that vitamin D has activity over. One of the most important processes in the body at maintaining health that we have not had a chance to overtly talk about. We've indirectly talked about it through mitochondrial specific autophagy, but we have not had a video specifically on autophagy. We will in the coming future, but autophagy is being thought of as an important basis for the health promoting effects of vitamin D. So autophagy is an evolutionarily conserved lysosomal self degradation process, a recycling process, as if you will, essential for cellular homeostasis, differentiation and survival as an adaptive response. It protects organisms against a wide range of pathologies, diseases, including cancer, infection, neurodegeneration, heart disease, and aging. Thus, compounds activating autophagy could have great potential in the prevention of common diseases. And I think that a lot of creators and providers that are very well-meaning make it seem like the only way you can activate autophagy is through intermittent fasting or prolonged fasting, and that is far from the truth. There are many things that you can do to increase autophagy outside of intermittent or prolonged fasting, although that does have a very important effect on autophagy to activating autophagy. Vitamin D also has an important role in that process. And it says, interestingly, recent data links autophagy to two functions of the active form of vitamin D, the induction of cancer cell death and the clearance of mycobacterium tuberculosis and macrophages because vitamin D deficiency is associated with many pathologies 
pathologies resembling those induced by a defective autophagy process, it is tempting to speculate that autophagy plays more than a general role in multiple health-promoting effects of vitamin D. I think one of the goals of this micro-series is to show the diverse and far-reaching effects of vitamin D in all aspects of your health and how critical it is and how you cannot afford to overlook this important hormone vitamin. This paper is titled Vitamin D and Autophagy Signaling for Health and Diseases, Insights on Potential Mechanisms and Future Perspectives. And it's saying here that vitamin D has been revealed as a potent anti-cancer agent and induces autophagy to increase the response to radiation and chemotherapeutic drugs for potential cancer therapy, increasing vitamin D levels in the human body through timely exposure of sunlight or vitamin D supplements. Not a huge fan. Neither is Dr. Cruz, if you follow him. Could activate autophagy as part of the homeostasis mechanism to prevent multiple human diseases and age-associated dysfunction or mitochondrial dysfunction. And in this paper titled, New Insights into Vitamin D and Autophagy in Inflammatory Bowel Diseases. Inflammatory bowel diseases are things like collagenous colitis or more classically Crohn's or ulcerative colitis. But this review focuses on the role of and mechanisms of vitamin D and autophagy and the regulation of intestinal inflammation. Vitamin D shows promise for the prevention and amelioration of pathologic responses in IBD, inflammatory bowel disease, an effect that is mediated at least in part by the induction and modulation of autophagy. And I think this is a really cool and important slide to end today's talk on is that vitamin D directly activates autophagy. There's no question at this point. There are many other things that activate autophagy, important things that we can do, but vitamin D is an important initiator and activator of autophagy. And it has a variety of effects when autophagy is activated. It's going to have an anti-aging effect. It's going to help maintain cellular homeostasis and metabolism. It's going to help protect against excess oxidative stress. And it's going to help protect against excess epoxy. Apoptosis. It's going to help with cell proliferation and differentiation. It's going to have antimicrobial effects against viruses and pathogens, bacteria, et cetera. And it's going to have important inflammation control and an immune response mechanism as well. But since this is a cancerous mitochondrial metabolic disease video, it also has potent anti-cancer mechanisms as well. I want to say as a side note that just like most of the mitochondrial dynamics, mitophagy, fission fusion, and biogenesis all have very clear health promoting and disease reversing potentials. In cancer, there is a gray area and I want to do a specific video on autophagy about those gray areas similar to the mitophagy video, but we can discuss that at a later time. So I want to give you a couple case studies from my work this week. I, I work seven days on, seven days off in general as a hospitalist locally. And I had two cases that were really heartbreaking for me. One was a, a, a person who was in their mid-60s, male. The person had just been diagnosed with cancer a few months before. It is still unclear if it is a primary pancreatic or a cholangiocarcinoma, which is a cancer of the biliary duct system, both of which are extremely deadly, difficult to treat, poor prognosis, et cetera, and presented with shortness of breath and chest pain and ended up having pulmonary embolus or a blood clot in both sides of his lungs. And in this case, it would be what they call a provoked PE in the setting of cancer. Just in the short time that I had with this, this individual, this very nice man, I was able to detect that he had an undetectable. Less than seven was the lowest vitamin D level we could detect on our hospital-based vitamin D, 25-hydroxy vitamin D test. It was undetectable. He also had, for me, a little bit higher blood glucose than I would expect, even for someone who doesn't have a history of diabetes, isn't obese. And I went ahead and ordered some testing to check whether or not he had insulin resistance, and he did. And so if we don't think that his hyperglycemia leading to a pseudohypoxia, driving the Warburg effect and a lack of vitamin D, which is an important protector against cancer, as you're going to see in the next couple of videos in particular, I'm going to show you the inside workings of vitamin D and show that it is an anti-cancer, anti-Warburg rock star. But if you think that that wasn't setting up that cancer in this nice young man, you're wrong. Case number two, 40-year-old male presented to the hospital with abdominal pain. And you would think 40-year-old male, obese, pre-diabetic, maybe it's something to do with his gallbladder. Maybe it's cholecystitis or gallbladder infection or cholelithiasis where there's gallbladder stones, cholelithiasis where there's stones in the, the common bile duct. Maybe it's a colitis, something common. No, this young man, 40 years old, had a giant liver tumor, probably primary liver cancer or hepatocellular carcinoma. The workup is still ongoing. I wasn't able to follow it past the admission, unfortunately. But I did also check a vitamin D level on him, deficient. Again, not quite as bad as the first one, but deficient. Insulin resistant. Obesity, pre-diabetic, this is a very common patient situation. 
especially the obesity, the diabetes, the prediabetes, insulin resistance, extremely common. And the more I check vitamin D in the hospital, the more I am so surprised how many people, even down here in South Florida, pre-tropical, 25th degree latitude north, most of the year, we have pretty good sun, pretty good vitamin D availability. If you get outside, so much deficiency. If there's one thing I can underscore by sitting outside and doing this video is that you have to get skin in the game. You cannot get well in the environment you got sick. And if you, the environment you got sick in is mostly an indoor life, which is most of people sitting next to a Wi-Fi router under artificial light, you're going to get sick and you're not going to be able to get well. Vitamin D is one of the most important tools you have in your tool bag. You got to get your vitamin D checked on a regular basis and you need to keep it up unsupplemented. It's really the best tool we have as a clinician to determine your amount of sun exposure is the unsupplemented vitamin D. If your vitamin D is less than 40 to 50 nanograms per milliliter, you are sun deficient. You're definitely vitamin D deficient, but you're, you're sun deficient. And you may say, doctor, it's less than 30. No, yes, less than 30 is trash vitamin D, but really the optimal is 60 to 80. And if I had cancer, I'd want it to, I'd want to push it up above hundred nanograms per milliliter, as long as it didn't affect my calcium levels, which I'll be honest with you. I've seen people who have very high vitamin D levels rarely, but I see it sometimes and I don't see hypercalcemia. And if it is, it's a very mild hypercalcemia. It's nothing to be worried about. Again, have a doctor check your vitamin D, have a doctor check your calcium level on a regular basis. But the bottom line is vitamin D is critical for the prevention of disease and for people with cancer. If you like this video, please like it, share, subscribe until next time.